Hello, and thank you for watching this short presentation and demonstration on Fortinet's privileged access management solution called FortiPAM. FortiPAM provides privileged access management control and monitoring of elevated and privileged accounts, processes, and critical systems across the entire IT environment. In essence, FortiPAM works as a bastion or jump host. Users that need to access resources will log into the FortiPAM in order to gain access to these resources. In FortiPAM, the resource that the user is trying to access are called secrets. A secret is a resource. The resource could be an RDP session into a server, an SSH session into a server or router or firewall, or an HTTPS session to a GUI of a firewall or any other networking appliance. 40PAM can work with 40 Authenticator and 40 Token or any identity provider to do multi-factor authentication to access the 40PAM. 40PAM has a close integration with 40 Client that can allow more secure connections. However, it is not required Required that users have 40 Client installed on their machine to access the secrets. Users can access secrets from their web browser. However, a 40PAM web browser plugin is required for this. I have a whole slide dedicated to this section and we will dive deeper into this in a moment. Let's look at some privileged access management features. For access approval to secrets, up to three tiers of approval can be set up. That means that for a very important secret, you can have three different managers have to approve the access. For post session audit, one of the most important important features of 40 Pam is that all access to all of the secrets can be recorded and reviewed by administrators. 40 Pam can do credential changing, meaning the password for the account that is used can have scheduled password changes. Users are never aware of what password is being used for them to access a secret through the 40 Pam. Secrets can be checked out so that only one person at a time has access to the resource. This would prevent more than one admin making changes to the secret at a time. There is also an SSH filter that you can apply to a allow or block certain commands for secrets that are using SSH. Admins can monitor logged in users and the history of all user sessions. Admins can view the active session and can terminate the session. Admins can view recordings in 40PAM or download the video recording for later viewing. Web Launcher versus the standalone 40PAM 40 client versus full 40 client with 40 EMS. Okay, as I was saying in the first slide, I was going to dive deeper into this, into the Web Launcher and the 40 client integrations. It is important to understand the differences here. The Web Launcher does not require 40 client. Web launchers consist of Web SSH, Web RDP, Web VNC, and Web HTTP for web access to a GUI. There is a browser plugin that must be installed for Chrome, Firefox, or Edge. Currently, as with 40PAM 1.0.3, web launchers are the only options for users using a Mac or Linux computer. The web launchers are great for computers that you do not control, such as a contractor and so forth. The session can still be recorded, however, the recording is only available when the session ends, thus no real time. The standalone 40 client for 40 PAM does not require any licensing or a 40 EMS server. However, this means that there is no zero trust network access tagging or posture assessment, which we'll cover in a moment. The use of 40 client allows for access to the secrets using a thick client such as the Windows RDP client or PuTTY or Secure CRT or any other application that is installed on the machine that will need access to the secret. Currently, this is for Windows only. The session is recorded and can be viewed with a few seconds of delay. Full 40 client with endpoint management server and zero trust network access. In addition to all the above, if you leverage 40 PAM with 40 EMS, then you can leverage ZTNA tagging. I'm not going to dive very deep into what ZTNA is. If you are unfamiliar, please educate yourself on Fortinet ZTNA solution. From a very high level, ZTNA can do a posture assessment on a host and report that posture assessment back to 40PAM via a ZTNA tag. If the computer does not have the required ZTNA tag or posture, then access to the 40PAM will be denied. With the 40 EMS and ZTNA solution, you can also do a client certificate check as well for login to 40 PAM. This does require 40 EMS with ZTNA licensing and server. I see this as being very important for scenarios where you need to allow access to 40 PAM from the internet. Of course, it would be important for local access, but if you need to open 40 PAM to the internet, having ZTNA would really lock it down to access from computers that are part of your organization, have the right certificate, and have passed your posture assessment for your organization. In the demo, I'm going to show examples of all three of 
of these different use cases. So let's jump into the demo. Okay, on this machine, I'm going to demonstrate the web launcher. Before I open the web browser, I wanna show that there is no 40 client installed on this machine at all. So I open a web browser. Notice on the web browser, I do have the 40PAM browser plugin installed. This can just be installed from any of the browser stores. It's obviously free. And this is used to input credentials into the browser so that I can get access to the secret. So this is more or less for contractors or short-term employees, or currently it's for machines that are running Mac or Linux that need access to the 40PAM. Whereas with with Windows and 40 client, you can access the thick clients such as Windows RDP and PuTTY, and I'll show examples of that here in a moment. But this contractor or short-term employee or web launcher only access connects to the 40 PAM. Notice this user is named contractor. They log in and here from the start page, they can see the secrets that they're allowed to access. And again, secrets are just the resources that are on the other side of the 40 PAM that the users need to get access to. This is access to a GUI through HTTPS. This is SSH access and this is remote desktop to a server. So let's see this process here. So the user launches the secret. So this is access to a FortiGate firewall GUI and the credentials are put in for me there and then I get access to the GUI. And this whole session is being recorded. So I can go in here and look at interface information here and all this information and everything that I'm doing here in the GUI is being recorded into the PAM. So let's close that down. Now I'm going to show an example of the SSH web launcher. And notice now I get SSH access to the FortiGate and then any command that I put in here, this whole session is being recorded here and I'll show you this in a moment. Let's launch the next one. So this is RDP through the web browser. And again, everything that I am doing in this web session is being recorded and you can see that it's being monitored by 40 PAM there. It shows up in the browser and let me close this down. So here on a different computer, I'm logging in as the PAM admin. I go to Login Reports and Secret and Secret Video, and we can see a recording of everything that the contractor did. And here you can see my session of login to the GUI. Again, this is from the contractor machine that has no 40 client installed on there. Anyways, that was that whole session that we did there. And this is just GUI access to the FortiGate. And again, it doesn't have to be a FortiGate. It can be any HTTP GUI that you need to get to through the 40 PAM. Then we did SSH and we can see that video here. And I really didn't do much in this session, but you can see that everything is there and it was only a 17 second session there. And we can look at the RDP session as well. And you can also see this all in full screen here. So this is showing a recording of that RDP session. Again, 40 client was not installed on the contractor machine. This was just using the browser plugins and the web launchers. Again, on the contractor machine, I'm not able to access a secret through PuTTY or through the Windows RDP because I do not have the 40 client installed on there. And remember, you can have the free version of 40 client for 40 PAM, or you can have the paid for 40 client that integrates with 40 EMS as well. And we're going to tackle those use cases here in a moment. So let's look at a machine machine that has the free 40 client 40 PAM version installed on it. Okay, so on this machine that has the non-EMS 40 client for 40 PAM installed on it, notice it has no information about my username or anything here in 40 client that if you're familiar with 40 client, especially the 40 client with the EMS that you're used to seeing, this is a very stripped down version here. But what this does is 
this allows me to use the thick clients to access the secrets. So let's see how that is done. Again, 40 client is definitely installed on this machine, but this is the free 40 PAM version of 40 client that you can leverage in your environment. So let's open up here and I am logging in as a user here red.admin. And here now are two secrets or resources that I want to get access to. These ones are a little bit different here where I need to request access here. And again, you can go up to three levels of approval. In my scenario, I'm just doing one level of approval. And then we also have a secret that you have to check out, which means that it would lock that secret down so that nobody else can access that secret while you are accessing that. So let's do the request. And with both of these, instead of using the web launcher in the browser, I am going to use a thick client that's installed. With RDP, I'm going to use the Windows RDP thick client that's installed on a Windows machine. And then for SSH access, I'm going to use PuTTY that's installed on this machine. So let's make a request. So I'm making a request for RDP into a Windows server. I'm just going to put 30 minutes. Of course, you can dictate the request duration as you see fit. You would put in, I need access to this server based on ticket one, two, three, four, as we talked about, and submit. Notice that my request is pending. The admin gets an email saying that user fred.admin has requested access to the secret needs your approval. The user logs in. And right as they log in, they can approve or deny this. I need access to the server based on ticket one, two, three, four, as we talked about, and I can either approve or deny this and give comments as well. And save. Now back on the client, notice that it's been now approved. And if I go back to secrets now notice i can launch the secret whereas before it said i needed to request access so now i can launch the secret and i could use web rdp but i'm going to use windows remote desktop and notice it's going to launch the thick client for rdp session here so again this is not going through the web launcher anymore but is the actual windows rdp client that's installed on windows and then i can get access to the server do whatever i need to do here and so forth all right, I'm going to close this down. And of course, all of this is being recorded, which I'll show you in a moment. Next, let's check out a secret. And I'm going to choose Checkout, which would lock it so that nobody else has access to this secret while I am using it. And I'm going to click Launch. I have different launchers here that I could choose. I'm going to choose PuTTY. And notice that my PuTTY sessions pops up, and now I have access to the FortiGate firewall through SSH here, and I can do whatever I need to do here. And again, this is all being recorded, but the difference is, is that I'm going through PuTTY instead of through the web browser. And notice here, 40 client is telling me that I am being recorded. Again, this has the free version of 40 client for 40 PAM installed on it. Okay, let's look at the secret videos for the two secrets that we did really quickly on the machine with the free 40 client and 40 PAM edition. Notice you can see the recording, even though this is using the thick client and not the web session, you can see that everything is being recorded. And here is the SSH session using PuTTY. Now let's see ZTNA in action on a host that has the full 40 client installed. So first I wanna start here for the ZTNA setup on the 40 PAM. I have an IP address set up on the 40 PAM that is set up for ZTNA access. And notice that there is a tag associated with this proxy access and the user must have the ZTNA tag of domain user. Now that's just a simple tag that I'm using in my 40 EMS setup. Of course you can set up any sort of posture assessment in your 40 EMS to create a tag and thus have the proper posture of that host. So let's look at a host that has the 
full 40 client installed on to it and see if we can access 40 PAM using ZTNA. On this machine that has the full 40 client installed on it, it's connected to a 40 EMS server. You can see I'm connected to EMS, see my username there, and you can see the tags that are associated with this machine. So now I open up my browser, I log into the PAM ZTNA IP address and notice that I get asked for a certificate here. So it does a certificate check. And then I granted access to the PAM due to the fact that I have the proper tag on this machine, meaning it's passed the proper posture assessment for my use case. And so the user can log in to 40 PAM. Let's go back to the host that has the free version of 40 client for 40 PAM installed on it and not the version of 40 client that is connected to my EMS. So that's this one here. Again, notice no tagging, no information about a tag on this 40 client. I am going to access the 40 PAM through the specific IP that I have set up to leverage ZTNA. It pops up and it asks for a certificate, but this is not going to be able to be the proper certificate because again, this machine is not in my 40 EMS. So this is going to fail here. Yeah, so this failed. So we can look in the logs here and we can see that this was denied access. And for the one that was allowed access, and here we go, here's, here's the, here where it shows the tag. So the tag was sent here. So this machine was allowed access, whereas this machine was not allowed access because it did not have the proper tag. So ZTNA makes sure that in order to access 40 PAM, you need to have the proper ZTNA tag or the proper posture assessment and also the proper certificate in order to get access to the 40 PAM and the secrets within the 40 PAM. Thank you for watching this demo. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please contact the Fortinet sales team for your area. Thank you very much.